There's a lot of banging on of late about inclusion, usually from certain parties that think artistic freedom is the worst thing ever, and that 1984 had some damn good ideas about suppression of free thought. But it seems to me that inclusion is an utterly meaningless buzzword, rendered so by both overuse and misuse. More to the point, it is absolutely not something that a creator should strive for. People like different things. With films, some like cheesy 80s action flicks, some like slow-paced art house pieces. With music, some people like country and western, some like metal. And within metal, some people like death metal, some like symphonic metal, some like pop metal, and so on. Within gaming, some people like 4X strategy games. Some people like Call of Duty, some like role-playing games, and within role-playing games, some like a high fantasy setting, some like a science fiction setting, some like a dark fantasy setting, some like a cyberpunk setting. But that's not what we mean, the perpetually offended cry. We don't like it would make us shut us out. To which I have to ask, how are you shut out? Recently, a person who seems to advocate genocide whined about a supposedly transphobic joke contained in a tiny part of the recently released Pillars of Eternity. Well, ignore the fact that the ultimate butt of the joke is the guy who killed himself, that there are plenty of ways to read the joke and not have it be transphobic, and that this whole thing is a pointless exercise in meaningless whining. Well, ignore all that and assume, for the sake of argument, that the joke was indeed a vile, trans-hating missive that spit acidic bile on that part of the population. What of it? To complain about such a thing is to state that, ultimately, no storyteller is free to create the world they wish in order to tell the story they wish in the manner they wish. If they wish to create an evil character, well, they can't be too evil, because if they spout any racist or sexist viewpoints, that would be triggering and thus should be removed. Never mind that they massacred a dozen towns, killing thousands of innocent men, women and children, selling the survivors into slavery. If they wish to create a post-apocalyptic world, well, <laughs> it can only be so brutal, because if you had a society that didn't tolerate any form of mutation, that would be ableist and thus should be removed. Never mind that 90% of the human race was wiped out, that every day is a struggle to survive, and that the remnants of humanity could be wiped out at any moment by radiation poisoning or rampant mutation. Bad things happen. Some people are racist, some people are sexist. Some people don't understand, don't care about, or simply don't like gays, lesbians, and transgender people. Some women hate men simply because they are men. Some men hate women simply because they are women. People steal, rape, and murder. If you feel that a piece of art is not inclusive because it features aspects of the human condition that you dislike, whatever the reason, it is neither the fault nor the problem of the creator. The fault and problem lies squarely with you. Those that blame the artist for their hurt feelings are a part of everything that is currently wrong with society. It seems to me that they are trying to, I don't, to sit in moral arbitration over the artistic work of others. That four-line joke in Pillars of Eternity is transphobic. Remove it! That piece of art from Fable is sexist. Remove it! The Batgirl cover is a rape fantasy. Remove it! By what right do they do this? How fucked up are things? when the artist is either too spineless or too threatened to stand up to such censorious bullying. Which then actually does raise the question of, if the creator does not value their work enough to defend it, why should we value it enough to pay for it? Maybe consider this as a final thought. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is one of the best written games there has ever been. It is dark, and it is fun, and it is exciting, and it is creepy. It contains elements of child abuse, sexual exploitation, rape, murder, and a plethora of highly sexualized characters. Given the amount of mewling and complaining over the last few weeks over a thoroughly poignant cover, a bit of tongue-in-cheek wordplay, and an utterly harmless joke, I really cannot see such a fantastic game 
ever getting made in this day and age, through fear of those self-appointed arbiters of morality crying about being triggered. The hardest lesson anyone has to learn about living in a free society is that your feelings really, really don't matter. Your feelings don't, my feelings don't. Don't listen to any of those lying cartoons or feel-good seminars. No one has the right to not be offended. And more importantly, no one has the right to censor art or speech because they find it offensive.